What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scoop and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we got a brand new video series coming out for you where we're going to be reviewing the SSI Boat Diver Specialty. And this is one of those specialties that kind of gets overlooked. A lot of people say, well, it's not a good specialty. You don't really learn something. And we would actually disagree with that and say it's actually a great specialty. Now it may not be the right specialty for you. If you're used to boats and you've been on boats your entire life, then yes, you're correct. You may not need this specialty. But for someone who is new to diving or new to water sports in general, and they've never really been on a boat much, they may not understand different terminologies or different locations on the boat, and they definitely may not know exactly how to secure their equipment. So that's what this video series is going to be about. Now, please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to go out and just dive off a boat. Make sure you're seeking out your proper uh, training from your local SSI training center. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter one of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty. Now, the first thing that your SSI boat diving instructor is going to go over is the different types of boat that you can dive off of, whether it's a liveaboard, a day boat, or even just a personal boat. There's some that is very useful to scuba divers as far as how we get in and out of the boat. And then some boats we have to kind of get kind of genius on how we're going to get in and out of the boat. So liveaboards, of course, are those boats that you're going to stay on for several days at a time and dive off of. Your day boats is typically your charters that you're going to you know, pay to go out with. And then your personal boats may be your personal fishing boat or your personal pontoon. And you want to make sure that each boat is set up to safely and efficiently dive off of. So you got to make sure you got the right ladders and things like that. So once you're in the water, of course, you can get back out of the water and back onto the vessel. Now, the next part of chapter one that we're going to look at, of course, is the cost. What does it cost to get on a boat? Yes, even personal boats has a cost, whether it's the cost of fuel to get the boat, say, from your house to the boat ramp or the cost of fuel to go from the boat ramp to the actual dive site as well. Now, on liveaboards, this tends to be an all-inclusive package where you simply pay. You own it for several days at a time. And, of course, it's going to include typically your lodging, your food, all your diving expenses, including air fills and things like that. Now, if you just do a day boat or what we call a day charter, then of course those costs may be separated out. You'll have your charter fee, that's how much it costs to get on the boat, and then you're also going to typically have a rental fee for say tanks and weights if you don't already have your own tanks and weights. Now some charters will actually include that. You need to check with your local retail SSI center and see what charters they have available. If they're an inland shop like ours, then of course check with the trips that you go on and see what they actually offer. I personally tend to like the charters where they include tanks and weights. It's a little bit less expensive than if I have to pay for a charter and then pay to rent it. But I also kind of like private charters as well because with private charters, you get a little bit extra time underwater. They don't really watch you like a hawk like they do on what we call a cattle boat when you're out there with, say, 20 or 30 divers at a time. Now, the next part of chapter one that we're going to look at is the actual features of a dive boat. And really, it really depends on what type of vessel you're on. If you're on liveaboards, you may have living quarters. You may have the food court area, if you will, or the mess hall. You may even have a compressor room. This is where they're actually filling the cylinders on the vessel itself. To where a day boat or a day charter is not actually going to have that. However, that day boat may have a rinse tank. It may have a camera setup station. It may have a rinse off section for where you can rinse off your your gear prior to getting back. Um, but it may not have as much room as the actual um, liveaboard does. Now, the last type is your personal vessel. What type of features does your personal vessel have? You're probably not going to have a rinse tank. You're probably not going to have a lot of places to set up, say, your dive gear, especially, say, if you're on your own fishing boat or a pontoon. But there's other features that you may have that may mimic, say, the day charter or, say, even the liveaboard, such as ladders, entry points, exit points. All these are to take into consideration whenever you choose the the dive boat that's going to be best for you. Now that we understand that there's different types of vessels and there are different features to those vessels, and we talked a little bit about the different costs, let's try to set up a dive plan and see how these vessels can actually assist you and some things that you should consider before you pay to get on a charter. 
One, what type of diver are you? Are you a solo diver? Do you need a buddy with you? Um, maybe you need a personal dive guide. You know, if you're on a dive charter who has maybe 20 or 30 divers on board, you might have two or three dive masters overseeing the whole crew, but you may need a private dive master, especially if you're new to diving, who's gonna dive just with you and not say the entire group, who can actually pay attention and focus on you versus having to look after the whole group. That's some things to consider as far as extra costs that you may have as well. Now, once again, if you're a solo diver, you may not really need to worry about that, but let's say you're not a solo diver and you don't have a dive buddy. You're gonna have to meet somebody, what we call an Insta buddy on that boat. I know personally, if I want an Insta buddy, I would rather have a private dive master dive with me than someone who is not very experienced. So these are things that I consider whenever I get on a dive boat, what's gonna be available to me based off what my dive plan is and based off what my certification level is and what needs do I need, say, for this dive to stay safe. Now, we are going to focus a little bit on liveaboard specifically because there's certain things that you're going to need to take, say, on that liveaboard that you wouldn't typically take on a day charter. And that's going to be, say, your personal toiletry items, maybe spare changes of clothes and things like that, or any other, say, medical needs that you, or things that you need to take for medical needs as if you were staying, say, in a hotel because obviously you're going to be on this liveaboard day in and day out for several days at a time. Now, with day charters, you're not really going to need that because obviously Obviously, you're just getting on the boat for several hours and then jumping right back off. But with liveaboards, there's certain things that you might want to consider taking, and you may even want to ask that liveaboard what is available to you when you're out there diving on a liveaboard. Now, no matter what type of vessel you choose to go diving off of, there is a checklist that you need for every single vessel. And most of the time on day charters or even liveaboards, this checklist is gonna be going over with you by say the dive master on the crew or even the boat captain himself. He's gonna show you where all the first aid equipment is, where all the emergency equipment is, maybe even the emergency radio. He's even gonna go over what channel that you need to be on if there's an emergency as well. He's gonna show you the different parts of the vessel, whether it's the bow, the stern, the head, the wheelhouse, things like that. And he's going to go over it with you. But let's say that you've got your own personal craft. Do you have a checklist of everything that you need? Where are your life jackets? Where are your audible devices? You know, your horns, whether it's an air horn or a whistle or things like that. Do you have the appropriate equipment on your personal vessel to safely go out and dive? You need to create a checklist not only for yourself, but for those others, say, on board. Now, dive masters and instructors, we tend to do this anyways, and charters are going to do this for you, but you still should have your own checklist that you go over before you get on the boat and once you get on the boat, just to make sure you have everything you need before you set sail for a day of diving. So the last thing that we're going to talk about in chapter one is available resources. Where do you go out to get the information about different types of dive boats and what's available for you when you're on a diving destination? Well, we live in a day of technology, so it's very easy just to go to Google and do your own research. You can type in a destination, type in local dive charters to that destination, and you can read all about it. You can also give a call to your local dive shops, especially if you're an inland shop like ours. We take a lot of divers offshore, whether it's out of the country or even even here in our local country. And of course, they can get information from us. We tend to do the same charters over and over because we trust those charters. So call your local SSI training center or say travel center and see what is available for you to go out on a dive charter. Get the information beforehand before you actually go on this trip. And then of course, last, ask the actual charter itself. Just pick up the phone, give them a call and say, hey, tell me about your accommodations, what's included, are tanks and weights included, is this included, and get as much information as you can before you actually go out on a day of charter and diving. So there you go, guys. That's going to do it for Chapter 1 in the SSI Boat Diver course. And we really hope Chapter 1 helps you understand the different types of vessels and how to choose them based off your needs. But I do want you to stay tuned. We have four more videos coming out in this series, and hopefully it'll give you a little bit more understanding about how to stay safe when you're out diving off a boat. Guys, please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to go out and boat diving. Simply use it as a review section to help you pass your SSI Boat Diver course. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below. Definitely stay tuned. We've got four more videos coming out. Until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.